It's just the way we talk in Tucson, Arizona. The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 351. It is, uh... Hey, you know what day it is? What's that? It's Tony Stark's birthday. <laughs> it is Thursday, October 19th, 2023. Maybe the 20th by the time you hear this, I don't know. I'm Ethan. Welcome, Grab fans. I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we cannot talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. Another banner week for the uh, World Wrestling Federation. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation. (laughs) You know, I've heard that before. (laughs) Yes. Um, Vince McMahon has been forced off of WWE Creative by his boss. (laughs) (laughs) Vince McMahon has a boss for the first time in uh, over 40 years, and we see how that's going. Um, Sting has announced his retirement. Mystico is a draw (laughs) at the Live Gate in Houston, or the Houston area. Much to cover. WWE, we can uh, start on that. They've uh, started their build to Crown Jewel where it certainly appears that we're getting Roman Reigns against L.A. Knight. Yeah. Let me ask, uh, is L.A. Knight over, or do people just like uh, chanting? Um, I mean, the only people that are over <laughs> are, are, it's like Roman Reigns and Cody, right? Like, those are the only... As far as if you want to point to like ticket sales, and even like I mean, Roman was <laughs> Roman was off TV for six months, and as we talked about, uh, they were selling out like every TV and a bunch of house shows and every pay per view, even shows he wasn't on. So I don't know how many like true draws there are anymore, but yeah, people love the sing along, and they, you know, they're they're really into the idea of him. <laughs> I think. I don't know. How do you feel? I feel like uh, it's 50-50. I, I, I'm getting strong. 2013-2014 um, uh, Brian Danielson vibes from this whole run. <laughs> um, and uh, Danielson um, had a chant that was very over. <laughs> mm-hmm. And... Um, I don't know if uh, at the end of the day, he he said it as well. I'm not sure if I was that over or if my yes chant was just that over. And with LA Knight, I don't know if he's that over or if people just saying yeah and uh, chanting LA Knight um, is over. I guess we'll find out. I don't know. Maybe we won't find out. And I mean, in the example of Brian Danielson, Chant gets if it's the chant, chant could still get you pretty far. Yeah. Um, and in the case the main of, event of WrestleMania. Yeah. And in the case of Danielson, my argument has always been they tried to give the yes chant to Big Show and John Cena, and it did not work. <laughs> People wanted Daniel Bryan in in that spot. Uh so again, long term, was it the chant that got him to that level for that brief period? Yes, I've absolutely had a big part of it, but I I, that's always been my argument against it being, you know, solely the chant that was what got him there because they very much tried to take the chant from him and it did not work. That's that's more than fair and absolutely correct. And uh, people just forget the period from uh, October (laughs) to uh, January where they October make like the biggest geek of all time. Yes. Where they tried to make the big show the star of WWE. <laughs> give him <laughs> give, give him uh, Daniel Bryan's chant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His ironclad contract. <laughs> but he still like had to work for the heels, even though he had an ironclad contract. It didn't really make sense to me. <laughs> yeah, there were some logic holes there. But, Sad uh, big show. Knocking out Dusty Rhodes and whoever. Yeah. Tears in his eye. Yeah. 
<laughs> Paul White, the actor. Uh, could have been, could have been him in uh, in in the Scorpion King. <laughs> that's that's what history would. Have been him in Blade Trinity. Yeah, that's what we'd like la- we'd like you to believe. <laughs> Anywho, we're building to Crown Jewel. We're getting a uh, Roman Reigns and LA Knight. We'll see how the people react when they beat LA Knight. Mm. <laughs> the good news is it's in Saudi Arabia, and so live audiences here won't react to it. Um, and uh, um, yeah, um, Logan Paul is going to be on that show against Rey Mysterio. I assume we're getting some iteration of Cody and Jey Uso going back after the tag team titles after they lost them to the Judgment Day. There's a five-way for the women's world title on that show with Rhea Ripley defending against a bunch of people. Uh, Bianca Belair has been advertised for that show. Uh, But so far, uh, the only official matches are uh, the women's world title match and the men's world title match with Seth defending against Drew who has definitely, definitely still not turned heel yet. <laughs> He's thinking about it. He's been thinking about it for a good six, eight weeks, <laughs> six, eight months. Actually, he came back first week of July, I believe, because I was at the show. Oh, and nice. uh, it's been um, nearly four full months of Drew thinking about turning heel. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they switched Kevin Owens to SmackDown. They switched the tag team titles off of uh, Cody and Jay. I don't mind hot shining a title every now and then because at least something happens on these shows occasionally. Yeah. What do you think of the, the decision to take the tag titles off of uh, Cody and Jay Uso after nine days? I mean, yeah, I don't. Neither of them for where they are going need ta- need the tag belt so um there's there's really no reason for them to have like a long reign as champions um tag belts don't feel particularly important um which i know sammy and kevin talked about that after they had won them and been champions for a little while that they felt like they were like letting everyone down because the belts felt really important when the usos had them for two years and then um and then uh, they didn't feel so important this summer, um, which I wouldn't necessarily blame on Kevin and Sammy as so much as WWE does. still, even under this new, this brave new regime of, of Paul Levesque doesn't care about tag teams. So um, yeah, I don't know. I, I put them on the judgment day. You're doing judgment day intrigue every week. You got like eight guys um, and well, like four guys in that faction you can mix and match. So there's a there's more to do like Cody being a tag champion going towards uh you know as we get closer to the rumble and mania and whatever they're going to end up doing there uh just didn't didn't really seem to serve a purpose other than to kind of do like you said just something a quick a quick switch and then a switch back just to uh you know point to something over the last like 6 weeks of WWE television and be like hey something happened <laughs> Can we, um, maybe the tag belts, uh, didn't seem important because like Kevin Owens was hurt for a month Mm -hmm. and they didn't take the belts off of him. And, um, Vince McMahon hates tag teams and, um, has sat and is not a Sami Zayn fan. And maybe that's (laughs) why, like, they main evented WrestleMania and then they had, a pretty forgettable five month reign with titles or whatever it was. Yeah. I mean, this happens to a lot of WWE baby faces who win a big (laughs) match at WrestleMania, which is that WWE has this habit of, uh, they're a little forgetful, uh, and uh, they forget to set up any challengers for the new champion after they've won the belt. Sure. Uh, Which is why like Becky ended up feuding with Lacey Evans for five months that one summer or, you know, Bianca wrestled Carmella a million times that one summer uh, or Bianca wrestled Bailey a hundred times that one year. Uh, it's just, they, they build the big moment between the top heel star and the baby face star very well sometimes. And then they're like, Oh, 
we forgot we didn't build any challengers so the champ has very little to do and then afterwards people go oh that rain was very underwhelming and you have to point to <laughs> you have to have actually watched the show at the time to be like yeah it's because they had no one ready for the new champion on on the other side so not not a new problem ultimate warrior won the title in 1990 mm-hmm <laughs> Also, wore your woman title at WrestleMania in 1990 and then went right into a uh, summer long program with Rick Rude, who the Heat had already gone around the horn with for a full calendar year. Yep. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Oh, we just learned no lessons. <laughs> 33 years we didn't learn a lesson. They uh, tried to turn Steve Austin heel and win the belt in 2001, and then Rock leaves, and they have no other baby faces ready for him. <laughs> Uh, which is partially because Paul decided he didn't want to be a baby face, but I digress. Yeah. Cause he was going to get steamrolled. So he decided he was going to team with Steve instead. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, his... smart for him. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. But terrible for the, for the, for the product. Really bad for business. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kevin Owens uh, and Sami Zayn now split as a tag team by virtue of Nick Aldis being introduced as a character and Kevin Owens being moved to SmackDown uh, to complete the Jay Uso trade. Because, uh, hey, at least they closed that, uh, that I don't want to say logic hole, but I don't know. They, uh, they tied up that loose end. Yeah. And, and Nick Aldis debuted. <laughs> Wearing a nice blue suit. Trying to think of what he looks like. He looks like um, if you took a Lego person's head (laughs) and put it on a standard action figure body. Mm -hmm. Um, That's just what immediately comes to mind. Um, What do you think about Nick in that spot? Fine. I don't. I don't think he's any more or less charismatic in that role than Adam Pierce. And Adam Pierce, and Adam <laughs> Pierce has been on this show for six years now, seemingly, um, and is in every other segment. I, I think Adam's a really nice guy. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing, nothing against him on a personal level. And I think, I think some of the backstage segments, like him and Chelsea Green, um, he's actually pretty like understated and funny in them. Yeah, I think he has his moments. But yeah. not not a not his level of talent as a speaker does not uh, does not equal the amount of time he is on screen. I would oh, say. a thousand percent. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of my opinion. Like, I think Nick Aldis has a certain air about him. I understand why people like him as this throwback, but he's not a wrestler now. So, like, I don't know. I guess he's just like it's kind of feels to me like when they made Spud the uh, the 205 Live GM. <laughs> And he's just this very like, like, well, we can't use William Regal on television for a little while longer, so we'll just put Aldis in this role and and uh, and and have him do it. I guess I don't know. Good for him finding a job that doesn't involve having to work for Billy Corgan. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, didn't of his household. He is a distant number two of who I would be hiring and putting on SmackDown right now if I were Paul Levesque. It's really quite something. Well, Mickey is headlining uh, Bound for Glory this weekend against uh, Trinity for the Knockouts World Championship. So, sure. I don't think she signed there though. Yeah, I don't. I think I think you could. I think you could sign Mickey <laughs> if you wanted to. Good. All right. Um, okay. The, the biggest story to me of, of this year, besides the merger going through Vince McMahon has been, uh, relieved of his duties as, uh, as being involved in WWE creative. And we kind of mused about this a couple of weeks ago and we're like, suddenly Johnny Gargano's on this show. Tommaso Ciampa's on this show. Big Bronson Reed is on this show. <laughs> All these people are on the show, but they still have the weird branding nicknames. 
Um, Austin Theory is uh, no longer front and center on the show. He's like uh, Grayson Waller's sidekick. Mm-hmm. Um, and it and reports were that after the merger went through, Ari Emanuel, who was apparently um, he's maybe the most famous agent Hollywood agent ever, and apparent and I remember going back ten years reading about how he was one of the few people the Vince McMahon would actually take input and advice from. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, now Ari is Vince's boss and he's uh, said, stop meddling in creative. Let your son-in-law who's definitely still married to your daughter, let him do his job. And um, whether or not the product is better or not, I don't know, but I think Raw and SmackDown make more sense. And they there's five things announced for the next week's show at the conclusion of the previous week's show. And uh and, and those things happen after being announced. Yes, and there's a wide array of talent used. And uh like Tegan Knox gets on TV, she was on NXT this week, she was on Raw this week. Becky Lynch gets on TV. Uh, John Gargano and Champa get on TV. It's a wonderful uh, variety show, I believe. It, what you're saying. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and um, yeah, so Vince got forced out because he was um, uh, very problematic mm. and uh, under federal investigation. <laughs> And uh, still under federal investigation, by the way. Sure is. And um, because he couldn't stop, he he was mad that he couldn't book uh, Elias and Ezekiel stuff anymore. (laughs) So then he spent five months plotting his revenge. (laughs) His revenge was to come back and sell the company. Mm -hmm. The sale goes through, and a month later... He's fired from his job right? as head of creative. Right. He still is the executive chairman of the TKO group. <laughs> right. He's he's still a figurehead executive, but he is no longer uh, getting his hands on the, the day to day of the company. <laughs> it's fascinating because we've got we've got Papa Nick to run the actual business. Yep. And hey, Paul and Bruce did just <laughs> fine. <laughs> while 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 the old man was was uh, MIA for a few months, so uh, you know if it ain't broke, hey, maybe as we've talked about, if in six months you know uh, attendance is down, and uh, and maybe they they don't get the money they want on a rights fee for Raw, maybe we press the emergency break glass, and Vince is back. But right now, looks like they feel like they don't really need him. Other than they want his name on the company for probably to, you know, calm stockholders who still have the opinion that he's, you know, the one and only wizard of wrestling. Yeah, there's a large percentage of of investors that panicked when Vince was uh, retired the first time and think, as you mentioned, he's the Walt Disney of wrestling Mm -hmm. (laughs) and he's. This living Warren Buffett creature in the wrestling space, despite all evidence to the contrary. <laughs> uh, it's fascinating, though, and uh, the um, the SummerSlam to Royal Rumble period pretty much sucks every year. Um, we'll see if it's any better this year. I would say WWE has not been good for the last two months. It's not bad it's painfully right. dull <laughs> yeah i mean and a part of that goes back to the real world champion being off the show for the last two months yes um and then the big angle that came out of the last show he was on was jimmy and jay splitting up and they decided they're gonna press pause on that until i guess mania um, obviously they had Jimmy got involved in the in the raw match this week, so they're gonna they're gonna be around each other, but I would assume the one-on-one match isn't happening. So 
what are you left with? Well, you've got Seth with the third place world title running around wrestling, you know, Paul, Paul's guys from 2015 NXT. Right. And you've got the judgment day stuff, which is obviously trying to somewhat, as we've talked about, replicate that, that faction drama, but, uh, you know, doesn't quite have the, uh, doesn't quite have the juice, uh, at least not yet. Yeah. All right. Uh, AEW. Uh, Sting announced that he's going to retire at uh, Revolution, which is either in February or March. Um, so we get a four or five month warning here. Mm-hmm. The end of the in-ring career of Sting. As we talked about off the air, the only pro wrestler to work into his 60s who also did not need the money. <laughs> He's a real marvel of he, uh he did have a divorce late in his fifties. True. And uh that can that can slash your net worth in half. But uh real estate Steve probably does not need the money and yet has taken a steady paycheck in wrestling for almost forty years now. People just keep driving dump trucks of cash to his doorstep. He's <laughs> like, well, I do why not? Yeah, this is uh, this is neither here nor there and really a waste of everyone's time because everyone hates hearing about other people's dreams. <laughs> but after Sting's uh, retirement announcement, I had a dream that uh, I was uh, hanging out with Sting and uh, some friends of mine and uh, we were making uh, pizzas in the small like pizza ovens that uh-huh. uh they're, I think they're called like solo stoves or something. I don't know if you've seen the commercials for them, but we were had like a sleepover and we're, yeah. we're making, we're making pizzas and stuff. And, uh, sting was, uh, he had a really bad memory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he couldn't remember a lot of his career. And I made a point of telling him, you know, when I was a kid, not a sting guy, big Hulk Hogan guy. <laughs> <laughs> Which probably accidentally is what I would say if I were to meet Sting in real life. Famously, you love telling professional wrestlers that you meet <laughs> that you like another wrestler more than them. I've done it a lot by accident. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Anyway, <laughs> old pizza oven. Hey, Sting, you want some pizza? <laughs> pizza looked really good. All right. Uh, yeah, so Sting has uh, decided to retire, and um, th- there's only one match you want to see before he hangs him up. That's right. Uh, as I have been banging the drum since he came back and had that first tag match, um, in Daly's place, uh, I said you need to do Sting and Darby versus the Bucks. Um, and they they sort of gave it to us at the with the six man at Forbidden Door a couple of years ago. Uh, but uh, I want to I want a regular two on two match between them at some point. And uh, another thing we we sort of talked about off the air, uh, which is that because Sting is not quite the carny <laughs> that uh, that he could be, uh, you really could have gotten like a, a Muda style like year long <laughs> where you go around to all the Sting, the, all the Crockett towns and he has his last match in like each place. Yes, um, but he's I mean, and I'm sure he'll wrestle a couple times before that that revolution show. They're obviously setting up something with him and him and Darby against uh, Christian's guys right now. But uh, yeah, th- th- he's not uh, he's not stretching it out in a uh, in, as much as he probably could have. And he's not he's not going the 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 steamboat or flare route and privately promoting his his own retirement he's just gonna right gonna wrestle in AEW and then and then call it quits right he is uh got his daughter in law I believe a job in the office mm-hmm. um he's on the convention circuit mm-hmm. um you know well I'm sure if he wants to uh, be an ambassador then he can still earn a nice check there as yeah. uh Paul White has proven you don't have to really do anything. <laughs> you know they've they've made they make poor Paul White do commentary most weeks. Yeah. 
um or they did for a while i guess he's he hasn't been uh on in yeah a- most a- weeks yeah AEW for whatever reason is very uh against on-screen authority figures but you could you could find a role i mean he wouldn't have to go to tv every week like he doesn't have to be a wwe style authority figure but you could have it send a camera to his his palatial estate and wherever does he live in california still I think he lives in Texas. Okay. Uh, he may. I, Probably has weird. a couple houses, right? <laughs> yeah, he may live in Texas and California because his uh, his son was like a, a big football star in high school and like mm-hmm. recruited a bunch, a bunch of colleges. And I think he played in both California and Texas. So could could be any number of a thousand places. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, just send a send a camera crew to his house to have him do like jack tunney style uh addresses when there's a when there's an issue that needs uh that needs uh deciding on sure bring him to tv like five times a year to do his entrance and and do his do a promo or whatever but yeah uh heck of a last little renaissance i'm glad his career didn't end getting hurt by seth rollins and then spending the rest of his life standing at WrestleMania access next to Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine, which is how they were using him after they put him in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's true. That is correct. Um, the discourse this week, pretty painful online about uh, Mystico. <laughs> AEW brought in Mystico for Rampage this week, taped the same night the uh, dynamite was taped this week in a Houston suburb. Uh, it's another reason why I assume Sting lives in Texas is because he was on this random show in <laughs> Rosenberg, Texas, announcing right. his route. Uh, anyway, uh, Mystico moved 2,000 tickets, and no one online will shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird, it's a weird deal because yeah they did also discount tickets going towards that final run which i'm sure helps sure um and i feel like that's something if we haven't talked about it on the air i know we've talked about it off the air but they have increased their ticket prices over the last i mean even the shows when they've come through our neck of the woods in baltimore and dc um you know they were pretty affordable when they were first coming here and they're you know pretty much in line with maybe not quite wwe prices but they're pretty you know, it's not a cheap night out, especially if you're, you know, a family of four or something. So the mythical family of four sure, cannot go to wrestling for less than a thousand dollars. Correct. But uh, but yeah, so Mystico moved some tickets, which was uh, which was funny. Um, like, I don't know why anyone's upset about it. <laughs> Other than that, they only ever saw him as Sin Cara in WWE, where he didn't try to <laughs> he didn't try <laughs> i think it's fair um like, I, think, I think he like, was there to make his money and also they tried to force him into their very narrow way of how someone should work and wrestle and speak and they cut the legs out from under him very quickly yes and they gave him because that stupid lighting he couldn't he couldn't do a promo right and uh they chose not to get him over so. Yeah, they pretended like they were trying, but it was very clear when they when you program when your first program is with Chavo Guerrero. Yeah, they're not trying. They're not trying to get you over. No, um, but yeah, other than that, I don't know. Hey, the the C- I guess it's also significant because this is the first time CMLL and AEW have worked directly together. Yes, they're um, mad at AAA now for some reason. Yes, well. <laughs> Maybe if Conan learned to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> I mean, they hired his goddaughter or whatever. What else? Who's not good at anything in wrestling? Like, what else do you want, Conan? Who are you disparaging there? I'm not. Uh... Taya Valkyrie. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why else did you hire her if that wasn't to try to make AAA happy? All I know is she was on TV uh, twice a week, every week for a good six months there mm-hmm. and now i haven't i haven't seen her in so long i literally forgot who she was <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hey, 
I, I saw, uh, I think it was Kevin Kelly talking about how like Rocky Romero is quietly like the most, like the most successful deal maker in modern pro wrestling as far as getting people to work together. Sure. Marty Skrull and anybody here. Yeah. <laughs> Not a great guy, maybe, but uh, make, makes a lot of deals. Rocky I, is uh, has a reputation as being one of the nicest guys in wrestling, and he also has a lot of very problematic friends. True. True so, on both accounts. Yeah. So, uh, and I don't know the guy. So I, I can't uh, I can't really comment. Speaking of um, our friend Kevin Kelly, demoted, <laughs> demoted from the on the collision announced team. Tony Schiavone is now doing play by play and Kevin Kelly is third awesome. Mike, <laughs> third Mike behind Tony Schiavone and Nigel Beginnis. Well, we we were talking about this off the air. Uh, his his perhaps problematic personal beliefs aside i still really like kevin kelly as a uh, as a commentator um there are things about his time in AEW that i think got him off on the wrong fit like him not knowing half of the roster's names yes um so i don't blame AEW i don't blame tony or the AEW management for being unhappy sure. with him as a as a commentator but i think he's very easy to listen to I don't think Nigel is particularly good, and I don't think he's ever shaken off some of the WWE commentariness uh, of himself. I would strongly agree with that. I think Nigel can be good. Mm -hmm. I think in AEW at times he has been good. Sure. I think he has a lot of WWE habits that he formed on commentary that no one has broken him of. And he's not as good as he used to be or he, that he, as good as he could be. Right. Correct. Um, but in general, I still think a Kevin Kelly and Nigel show pretty easy to listen to. Doesn't make me want to like pull my ears off. Like when Irish guy and Corey Graves are yammering <laughs> on SmackDown uh, every week. Oh, gosh. So uh, so I, I, I don't I feel a little sorry for Kevin Kelly, um, but. Uh, as as Tony Chivani told the story, he told Tony Khan he'd like to try being like a lead play by play guy again and suggested Rampage and Tony offered him collision instead. So, uh, like I said, it sounds like Tony Khan's not enthused with Kevin's performance, if that's the case. But it also does, it, this isn't like Shivani gunning for <laughs> like Shivani, the political operator gunning for anybody's job but yeah the, the end result is we now have shivani and kevin kelly and nigel in a somewhat awkward three-man booth yeah and it's only been one week right sure. so perhaps it will uh this will all work itself out and tony shivani will once again work himself out of a play-by-play -play job <laughs> um maybe Kevin Kelly ends up on Rampage. A million different ways this could all shake out. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think Kevin did himself any favors coming in. And as you mentioned, not knowing any of the talent and not doing his homework. And uh, that's hard to recover from. You get one chance to make a first impression, blah, 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 blah other cliches. Yeah. And um, I think it's important that they have other people besides Excalibur that yes. can do a competent job in that company, Ian Riccoboni doesn't want, um, he wants to ha quote unquote have a real life. <laughs> he wants to, uh, quote unquote have a marriage and, uh, quote unquote have a family life. And, uh, so he's not interested in, uh, in a bigger role. Otherwise, he'd be the slam dunk runaway choice. Right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll see how, uh, Kevin Kelly, uh, and, uh, Tony Schiavone and Nigel McGinnis. <laughs> And Jim Ross is also there. Uh, <laughs> the big four-man booth for Collision. I guess Kevin was out before the main event this week, and uh, JR was back in there for the main event. And JR got to be on Dynamite uh, with Nick Wayne's mom. He sure did. I don't trust the intentions, to borrow a phrase of yours. Yes. I don't trust the intentions of whoever decided that we needed to feature Nick Wayne's mom on television going yeah. forward. You know, I don't either. 
I don't either. Um, <laughs> it's not the worst television performer I've ever seen. No, yeah, she's she was fine. She's for adequate. A non, yeah, for a non. <laughs> Not particularly good, but not particularly bad. Right. She's not a she's not an actor, but uh she wasn't she's not yeah, she's not the worst person I've ever seen <laughs> pretend to cry on a wrestling show, I guess. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um MJF and uh of uh, uh Jay White. Uh this doing anything for you? <sighs> not really. <laughs> M- MJF as all like, I, like MJF is trying to move, I think, a little bit out of his his shtick, which I appreciate. Like they've tried to give him like a personal issue to cut a you know a fiery babyface promo about, which he's never done before. Um, so I can appreciate that. Um, and they're they're building out his uh his 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 MySpace top eight because he needs more friends than just Adam Cole. Um, so they're slow. They're doing a slow build to him accepting the acclaims assistance and them doing an eight man tag against the bang, bang gang at some point. Um, and that will, I guess, be further set up because they're doing the, the diamond ring match between MJF and juice on the way to MJF and, uh, and Jay at the pay-per-view. It's fine. It's fine. I don't uh, think it's the least of their problems right now. I don't think it's been particularly good. <laughs> I think it's uh, the least of their problems right now. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it does, like I said, it doesn't. It's not lighting my world on fire. Um, I'm glad that Jay White is being used in a prominent spot on the show because it felt like he was in real danger of uh, Im- almost immediately slipping into the the cracks of this show uh, when he first got there. Um, but I'm glad he's being used in a more prominent role. He, t- the man took to us TV wrestling as quickly as anyone. I guess he had done impact like during the pandemic and stuff. So it's not, yeah, like it doesn't he- count. but yeah, like a real show. Yeah, it doesn't count. <laughs> it's, it's very impressive how well he adapted himself to, uh, to us TV wrestling. But uh, yeah, this feud itself, not, not great. Uh, not terrible. Just it's, it's there. Also, if you draw up a list of opponents that Jay White has wrestled, um, they're pretty much everyone that I would put on a list of guys that I would not have Jay White wrestle to showcase Jay White's talents. Yeah, like I, I didn't mind the match with him at Pentagon this week, but that's, you know, yeah, he hasn't been given. Commander, Gravity, yeah. Pentagon. Yeah, like he put him with Lucha guys. <laughs> now that you mention that. Yeah, it's weird. Okay, well, there's a big Battle of the Belt special this weekend. Mm-hmm. I was, I, last note, they've somehow made me not want to see my favorite character in wrestling, which is Roderick Strong, <laughs> the friend cuck. Oh, those they've segments are it. absolutely yeah. dreadful. They've ruined S- it. <laughs> segments are horrible. And like, I don't even dislike like what they were doing in the arena. I didn't even hate all of that. And I, I kind of liked the kingdom as like these two goofballs on the outside with him, but these, yeah, these pre tape segments they're doing are, uh, are just, it's just, just, it's like the worst TNA stuff, but, uh, but turned up to the nth degree and Hey, Sanjay Dutt and Jeff Jarrett are there. Probably a coincidence. Blame a lot of bad things in wrestling on, uh, on Jeff Jarrett, I guess. Yeah, not good, not good. Really, 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 really bad. Uh, do they even do they mention the uh, the masked uh, figures attack this week on TV? Uh, I want to say the commentators did at one point. Okay, uh, I I tune those guys out. Sure, sure, <laughs> understandable. So- but they, for, again, Jay White didn't really seem, I guess he just assumed it was MJF. But at the very least, shouldn't there be intrigue into who these other guys that were helping MJF allegedly were? Yes. <laughs> that Because the whole storyline right now is that he has no friends and he won't accept help from anyone, even though he's outnumbered. So you feel like maybe you'd want to put, put more attention to that 
if if you're uh but hey you've got a few more weeks to the pay-per-view so <laughs> we'll see and problem then... is the problem is it's always we're always well they have eight more weeks to the pay-per-view they have five more weeks to the pay-per-view they have four more weeks to the pay-per-view there's still three weeks to the pay-per-view and then the last week is when they do they do everything yep <laughs> it's awful <laughs> Awful company. They have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> I I understand the strategy because I've heard <laughs> because I've heard or read Dave say that in Tony's opinion, and I guess there's stats to back this up, I would assume, anybody's decision to buy the pay-per-view is going to be made in like the last three days. So those are so I think in Tony's opinion, that's really the only shows that matters. It's like the last Wednesday and Saturday before your pay-per-view, which I again doesn't make for a, a, a fun or like particularly connected feeling uh television show along the way. But I think that's their their feeling is we don't really need to wrap ramp things up or announce matches even until about two weeks out. So um, I will say they it feels like they've they've put like everybody's talking about how they want to shout the world title suddenly. So it feels like maybe they they've decided that they should give <laughs> give the singles wrestlers something to talk about and like the point of all of this. Like Kenny's talking about how he's gonna he's gonna beat all of the members of the Don Callis family and then he's gonna go after the world title again. So it's like, okay, they're doing they're doing little things. But the the macro issues have not uh, been fixed. To your point, yeah, that's fair. Um, NXT every week, um, not a particularly great show, but a uh, very easy to watch show and uh, logical show. And uh, and uh, they have a two week Halloween Havoc special coming up. So uh, we're getting uh, Carmel Hayes and. Um, What's his name? Lonnie Donegan for the uh, <laughs> Ilya Dragunov for the for the NXT title for the third time. We're going to get that on night two on mm. uh, Halloween night itself. And Becky Lynch against uh, Lyra Valkyria. Valkyria. Valkyria uh, this week. Um, uh, the uh, the stereotypical uh, Tony D'Angelo and Stax We'll be defending the tag titles against Chase U. And um, yeah, and uh, the debut of not Brian Pillman Jr. Lexus King. <laughs> he sounds like a credit bureau. He does. Uh, there's, I guess there's some, uh, what it's his, his stepfather's his step- last name and his, his, uh, his sister who passed away's first name is how they got here. Yeah, it's, it's uh it's it okay <laughs> sure um i like i don't know we've talked about probably talked about this off the air look it's amazing that brian pillman jr isn't a murderer um based on the upbringing he had he went through a lot of terrible stuff if you ever watched the dark side of the ring about brian pillman senior you know you know some of it um so i <laughs> i treat a lot of things that he does and says <laughs> With kid gloves, I think, uh, because I have some sympathy knowing knowing the sort of uh, upbringing he had. That being said, I've never really seen anything from him as a pro wrestler that made me want to see more of him on my television screen. So, you know, best wishes. Hope the, the fresh coat of paint in WWE does something for him. But, uh, I mean, who are, who are we talking about here? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's more than fair. Uh, Impact has bound for glory this weekend. Dozens of people will be watching that show, and uh, I think that's probably we've uh, we've covered about all that needs. A lot to be of people, most of whom don't watch the show, will talk about how stacked their <laughs> their roster is. Yes, I love hearing people talk about how stacked the Impact Women's Division is. It very well may be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not disparaging any of them. Of course, I respect them all. Um, being the chief woman respecter of this podcast, but uh, it's just like nobody, nobody watches it. <laughs> like 
Like we know, we know how many people watch these shows and it's nobody. <laughs> Correct. All right. That was Liam <laughs> on impact. And <laughs> it's more uh, me, me shitting on uh, the podcasters and the tweeters uh, for lying and pretending they watch impact. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Speaking of NWA claims, they have a television deal with the CW. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's cool. All right, well, uh, let's get out of here. Uh, This has been episode 351. And uh, once again, to timeless Tony Storm, (laughs) happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. Uh, And uh, to to many more of these weird little art house short films that she and RJ City are, uh, are producing. I got no problem with them. They're during commercial breaks. Yeah, they're fun. <laughs> they're... She she's super entertaining. He's tolerable. That's, that's the other thing too. Those Adam Cole comedy bits are not funny, and they also go for like five minutes. Correct. She's in and out in like ninety seconds. So even if it's like not a great bit, it's a, it's really short. And also, she's funny, and RJ City is very funny. So it's like it's. It's a pretty low bar for them to clear, but it's like, yeah, it's they get in and out. They don't overstay their welcome. It's also picture in picture commercial breaks. Like it's right. not taking away from time on the main show. Unlike those awful Adam Cole <laughs> and Roderick Strong segments. Can't stress it enough. No and, and also the kingdom is there. Yeah. <laughs> doing, doing funny faces in the camera. Oh, all right. Well, till next time, everyone, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Yeah, you know, I had COVID like it's like a month ago now, and I don't have any uh, like real symptoms left. And again, never had any lung or breathing issues. So I'm, I got off easy, I think it's fair to say. But yeah, just 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 get a cough for the rest of my life, I think. Just seems just, less than ideal. Just an occasional like very dry, you know. 30 seconds of hacking about three times a day. It's great. Problematic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, you know, well, that and uh, as I found out this week, I guess my sense of smell is is somewhat diminished because we had something of a gas leak at work and uh, everyone could smell it but me. Hmm. So. I mean, I could smell it when I was like right on top of the maintenance closet where the leak was probably coming from, but, uh-huh. but I could not, uh, I could not smell it anywhere else. Whereas everyone else, like as soon as they went into the room, that's just outside the maintenance closet. was like, Oh yeah, it smells like gas in here. I was like, I don't, I don't get that at all. <laughs> well, what does gas smell like? Um, I guess it's like a little bit like something uh, like like garbage. Like, <laughs> okay, so it's just like something kind of funk, just like funk, funky air. I don't know. I like. I don't know how you would uh, how you would describe it. it. Doesn't it doesn't smell like gasoline? Mm-hmm. Um, it's not quite so, but it, yeah, it just smells like there's a some sort of you know if there was like a, yeah like a garbage flavored air freshener. <laughs> That's a terrible funny. idea. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think it would sell. He's a wee fella. Smells like garbage. <laughs> but uh yeah, it was it was a fun bit where so we called BGE and they're like, all right, we'll send someone. And 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 we were like, should we call the fire department too? And they're like, uh no, we'll send someone out and then they'll call the fire department. <laughs> All right. 
the guy gets the, so the BGE guy gets there and he goes in and he's like I, I unlocked the door and he's like I was like should I come in the building with you mm-hmm. he's like well if you could yeah you need to show me where like where you smelled the gas it's like okay so I take him to the closet and one of my coworkers had turned like the because the little like gas line that goes with the HVAC system is in that closet and she mm-hmm. she had decided to turn it off Mm-hmm. Um, and he goes back there and he's like, why is this off? And then we were like, because we smelled gas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, they smelled gas. Um, and he's like, huh. He's like, yeah. And he pulls out his little, like, looks like something from Ghostbusters. And, he, you know, it beeps. I guess it's like the gas air detector. <laughs> I think that's the technical term. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, there's traces. I don't really smell anything, though. I was like, is it is it because we shut the gas off? Do you think that's why you don't smell gas? <laughs> He's like, yeah, there's probably something going on with the valve. He's like, did you turn your heat on? I was like, yeah, like last week I was out, but somebody turned the heat on for a couple of days. Although the HVAC guy had just been out here like a month ago and he tested the heat while he was here and that didn't happen while the heat was on then. He's like, well, you know, when it's been off for a while and you turn it on for a while, sometimes the valves just don't, uh, I don't know, just get your HVAC guy out here. <laughs> he kept like trailing off mid-sentence when he was explaining <laughs> what was happening, which made me feel like he didn't know what was happening. Right, right. Um, and then we we get to, we get so he goes to like walk back outside and the fire department is there in like full gear and the mm-hmm. uh, and he just goes, never mind. And he walks to his car <laughs> and the, the fire, the firewoman just kind of goes <sighs> and then like turns around <laughs> and goes back to the truck. And then she's just kind of standing there and she's kind of looking at me and my, my coworker. And we're just like, uh, do you want to come in and like check things? And she goes, well, he already did. So <laughs> and they just leave. <laughs> And uh, so that was my my event. And then we and then our HVAC guy came and was out here all day and spent the first four hours telling us that it wasn't something with the HVAC system. And then he had to leave to get a part. And then he came back and after a few more hours said it's fixed now. So I don't know what uh, what he fixed since he had told us that it wasn't the HVAC system earlier, but allegedly it's fixed now. So we shall see. Why is everyone incompetent? It's a great, great question. Yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> got these uh, falafel hot dogs. I got these uh, refrigerated uh, protein bars. Hmm. I I don't know how I, anyone ate protein bars before these refrigerated protein bars. Well, if you got the ones that like had more sugar than an actual candy bar. <laughs> yeah. You know, like a cliff bar or something. Those weren't bad. <laughs> yeah, those are just... do, doing much for your health, but they taste good. <laughs> yeah. The Gator- Gatorade mix one that's like uh pretty delicious also. And it's uh like seven hundred calories. <laughs> <laughs> and as you mentioned, more sugar than a pint of ice cream. <laughs> Did you watch the new Frasier yet? I watched episode one. Okay. I think the third one came out, was released today. Okay. Um, will you watch episodes two and three or were you one and done? I will at some point. Yeah. I just, uh, episode one was available on YouTube and uh, two and three, um, I would have to go to the trouble of opening the <laughs> Paramount Plus app and figuring out the password and signing in and like that's the level of not into it i am that like i can't be bothered to sign into an app (laughs) which i think speaks to the (laughs) the the way that this show has has uh has not been able to enthuse you the world's the world's most renowned and number one (laughs) fraser fan yes into figuring out his email and password for an app yeah uh 
Yeah. Well, it's also like, uh, so we had a Paramount Plus subscription because we're at, uh, for as an add on to like Walmart Plus, which is their uh, version of Amazon Prime where you mm-hmm. get f- like free shipping or whatever. So it's like, I also don't know like what tier Paramount Plus subscription we have. I don't know if it's ad for, I'm definitely not sitting through ads. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like well then am i gonna if we get the base subscription for free am i gonna spend another five dollars a month to watch this program without ads i don't know i really can't be bothered <laughs> i will at some point be bothered and, and 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 finish these the first episode was not so bad that i was like oh well that's enough that's but good. but also um yeah, I'm not like uh, chomping at the bit to see the rest. Right. Fair enough. Well, we'll we'll stay tuned. The same uh, same bat time and same bat channel. We'll see if you <laughs> if you muster up the effort to uh, to watch new Frasier or just continue to watch reruns of old Frasier in the middle of the night. <laughs> well, the problem with that is that uh, tonight marks the beginning of the Hallmark Channel's countdown to Christmas. <laughs> it's October. <laughs> It certainly is. And tw- 24 hours a day until the end of the year, they will be playing Christmas movies from now until December 31st. That is unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> that should be illegal. So my dream television block of Frasier, Cheers, and Reba uh, is over for the year. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm bummed. I'm pretty bummed. Yeah, great. All right. Well, uh, hopefully I've wasted enough of your time. (laughs) Yep, that'll do. All right. Uh, Love you, pal. All right. Love you, too. Bye. Bye. I try to keep on keeping on.